Family Guy could have been a flame that burned too bright and died out. Depending on who exactly you ask, some people might even say that's exactly what happened. But undisputedly, after all these years, the show has managed to keep itself relevant and mainstream, even after what many would agree were a rough few seasons. Which seasons were rough? Again, that depends on who you ask. But how exactly did the show go from being cancelled twice to being one of Fox's flagship series and for better or worse, a bastion of adult animation. Well, the show honed in on a blueprint for success in a completely different Seth MacFarlane creation, American Dad. Despite American Dad never quite reaching Family Guy levels, its plot robustness and smart satire lent a helping hand to a sinking ship that's been patched up and is still sailing to this day. Let's take a look at how Seth MacFarlane took what worked with the early series of Family Guy and perfected it in American Dad. Whether you hate or love him, you can hardly argue that Seth MacFarlane isn't a categorical genius. The man is responsible for some of television's most groundbreaking contemporary adult-oriented entertainment. Perhaps there were times when he wasn't the best creative director in Commander-in-Chief, and it's also true that his brain children have had some drastic transformations, some for better and some for worse. Yet Seth would give the world two crown jewels of adult animation, American Dad and Family Guy. Just the two. No others. Get out of here. And we're not going to get into a deep dive about which is better than the other. Just straight up, I think that comparing these two shows is apples to oranges. For the most part, the subculture born in the multiverse of McFarlane's madness has a clear-cut verdict on the big grand debate. The fact that the characters in American Dad actually feel like characters and not some plot convenience devices has earned the show a medal for its plot robustness. On the other hand, it's hard to grasp the comedic and satirical motivation behind Family Guy, which had more cutaways than actual storylines. It's no wonder Family Guy was born out of this weird witch's cauldron where every ingredient seems almost experimental, except somehow it's just a more ineffective recipe to conjure a formula that everyone seems to be aware of. Of course, we're talking about The Simpsons. It'd be redundant here to go over some of the more detail-oriented comparative analyses between the two transformative shows. But one thing was clear. McFarlane tried to follow The Simpsons' cookie-cutter success formula to make something special. And we typically punish the creator for obscene plagiarism if it wasn't for his redemption arc with American Dad and the changes that Family Guy would eventually make to its series at large. So how did a mildly popular show fix a titan as big as Family Guy? The Novelty of American Dad From the ashes of Family Guy's cancellation and re-emergence as a cultural juggernaut, a new second show emerged. Kind of an offshoot, like evolving a Ninkata and ending up with a Ninjask and a Shedinja, which is a weird reference I'm just now realizing. It's true that American Dad has lived under the dark, baggy shadows of Family Guy. When McFarlane found success in the world of the Griffins, Fox wanted him to produce another animated series that would perhaps yield similar market share as the creator's earlier gimmick. This is why we can't argue that Family Guy didn't pave the way for its sibling series American Dad. American Dad was originally planned to be the replacement for Family Guy because, again, Family Guy was cancelled for a while in the early 2000s, with Family Guy actually only being fully revived on Fox just three months before American Dad would originally air. And so, it's easy to see that in many ways, American Dad was the antithesis of everything that Family Guy stood for. Sure, it wouldn't generate as big a hype as its predecessor, but it does hit the mark with what it's trying to do. Right when American Dad began, it was clear that it was different from how other Seth MacFarlane shows would go. There were no cutaways, or at least not to the extent of Family Guy. In fact, MacFarlane himself had very little to do with the actual running and writing of American Dad. Seth was much more focused on Family Guy, which again was coming back, and he left other showrunners and writers in charge of American Dad, and that's where they began to find their voice why American Dad stood out. American Dad stood out from its competitors, including its predecessor, Family Guy. 
the way audiences interacted with the show and characters as staunch as Stan and Roger showed creators the value of larger through lines that created the avenues for humor themselves and not the other way around. So there was an animated show that depicted the real and politicized complexity of people through character building in story arcs. For instance, Stan is a staunch conformist and government man, while his daughter Haley is the poster child for individualism and self-expression. A lot of humor for the show comes from these very contrasting characters who usually find odd ways to manifest their beliefs. At the same time, when American Dad was finding its wings with these plot-heavy through lines, Family Guy was going through what we could call a flimsy plotline at best. Most of the time it felt like the writers came up with a list of jokes or one-liners that they then had to fit into the half-baked plot in hopes of finding some comedic value with the Griffins. In doing so, writers have killed several prospects of plot fullness that were retained in the show multiple times. It was actually the success of the semi-serialization of American Dad that showed McFarlane and his team how to give Family Guy a real chance to change a lot of the characters they already had within the show. How Family Guy Improved Take Stewie and Brian, for example. Brian's character in the show was initially written as the voice of reason, someone who is incredibly cultured and well-read, to contrast with how crazy and out of touch Peter could be. Regardless, Brian's very own characteristics kept getting challenged when he would tag alongside Peter to do something incredibly dumb. This variation in character often gets exposed because the writers just want to crank out some jokes at the expense of Peter's foolishness. And of course, every man on a mission needs a sidekick. Similarly, the writers did something bold by making Stewie into this intelligent child who is obsessed with ruling the world and wanting to murder his mother to death. When there was a need to do something out of character, writers would give some fodder to do something comical and funny. Notice how characters like Brian and Stewie didn't have a specific character parameter. Instead, they were initially mere accessories to show the bizarreness of the other characters or subplot lines. For Brian, he would add on to Peter's idiocy. Today, Stewie and Brian have been turned into an iconic duo who choose their own adventure. In particular, Stewie, who was previously painted as the villain, now exists as almost a hero sometimes, who has some actual motivation to go after people who dare to cross him or people he cares about. His partner in crime is mostly Brian, who is left either blindsided or just an unwilling accomplice in many revenge quests. But then, progressively, the writers gave the dog a world of his own. He sort of became the only character to embody a semi-consistent characterization of being a lousy liberal who hides behind his blatant arrogance in chauvinism. Now, Perhaps that wasn't the best character arc for Brian, but at least he has a complexity of his own. Aside from that one time where he got a whole plot line where he left the family, but that was undone and forgotten about like the next episode. It's true that the show still suffers with segues into jokes, but with characters like Brian, you still have something meaningful to interact with. The most staunch liberal on the show who supports gay marriage wants to legalize marijuana back when that wasn't legal in a ton of the country. In fact, Brian calls himself the famed family liberal and compares his political struggle with MLK, Rosa Parks, and Nelson Mandela. Even if it makes Brian a more unlikable character most of the time, it's at least a character trajectory. But the most important thing to notice here is that Stewie and Brian themselves represent the same plot robustness that American Dad was sort of built around. Why is Family Guy relevant today? To say that Family Guy has remained exceedingly relevant despite a tiring two-decade run would be an understatement. You can hardly open any social media without seeing some Family Guy clip above some shitty mobile game. Family Guy honestly kind of feels like it was almost tailor-made for this style of consumption. But how is it that the show was able to tap into regular audiences who would tune into the show even if they have to watch a 10 minute sequence that really has nothing to do with what's going on the rest of the time? I think the reason that Family Guy has stayed relevant in the mainstream is because it didn't choose to remain static with the demographic it wanted to appease. And you can probably guess which show actually took the first bold step to not alienate but appease a younger audience. 
While Family Guy would routinely change who the show was seemingly aimed at, kids, teens, and young adults, it didn't matter the year, American's dad audience never felt like they aged out of the show. When McFarlane created American Dad, the creators deemed it fit to shake out the show's political commentary that was intrinsically tied to the mid and late 2000s. Of course, Bush wasn't going to stay president forever, and the rhetoric about compromising privacy in safe places for the sake of public security would galvanize into another urgent narrative. This is why American Dad took a break from contesting the political arena of America to bring some apolitical humor to the forefront of the show. Now, that was a risky move. That was kind of what the show was built around. Yet American Dad's perpetual transition worked like a charm because it wouldn't have been able to cater to one demographic again and again. This is the exact lesson that the creators of Family Guy picked up on too. That's the reason why we have an unpopular defense for Family Guy's often tasteless jokes and plot lines that seem to push the boundaries of ethics and morals way too many times. What you really can't dismiss is the idea that the Griffins can entertain anyone, from boomers to zoomers. Sure, there is another demographic altogether that would report the show to the FCC for its allegedly harmful comedy. But of course, if there's anything controversial about American Dad, it's the constant allegations of a liberal left-leaning problem propaganda machine. The idea here is that if you can't make everyone happy, then the next reasonable thing to do is to maximize the audience you entertain. Family Guy is doing just that. You'd be hard pressed to find another show where a child and a dog travel to Poland to meet Hitler, and in the process give the audience a back to the future plotline. Or when the show keeps punching us with references from Star Wars, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, or even The Godfather. Such throwback episodes are largely there to remind the older viewers of the show that even in a new chaotic Gen Z world, they still have this cultural closeness and family guy. And well, that strategy works like a charm. Similarly, for Gen Z, the show has relic masterpieces like Season 9, Episode 7, where Brian and Stewie attempt to help an overworked and fatigued Santa Claus. The hilarious ordeal then takes an anti-capitalist route to demonize the materialism and hedonism of the world we currently inhabit. Even in the outrageous comical notion, Gen Z finds something of substantial importance in a story that was written by a bunch of boomers. This is to say that Family Guy has improved its capacity to roll out some relatable plot lines that aren't just coming from sometimes badly written jokes. Of course, you won't be able to find any relatability in Peter fighting a rooster. That's not the notion we're suggesting. But American Dad transformed itself into this piece of media that will talk about the issues that are either too taboo or can only be portrayed in hypothetical animated worlds that can't be scrutinized for being real or dangerous. American Dad finds its relatability in mediums like ideological clashes between parents and children, and the most vulnerable becoming the butt of the joke. Family Guy creates the notion of relatability by vilifying its own characters, sometimes pretty brutally. All this is why the show was able to maintain its longevity on television. Right off the bat, its loose creation and lousy storylines were bound to be shelved sooner or later. Yet the fact that American Dad was able to help redirect the show into a more successful entity is the reason why we're still watching The Griffins today. But anyways, this has been 10K Bill, and thanks for watching. Comment down below what you'd like to hear me talk about next. Follow me on Twitter at 10kbill, and of course, make sure you subscribe for all your entertainment-related content.